Hello everyone. Welcome to Drama Free Friday. How's everybody? Hope you're doing well. Hi Melissa. Hi Tia. Well, welcome to a Drama Free Friday fix. That's right. Glad you are here. Hello, Allie and Vicki. Hi, Muriel. Hi, Judy. Great to have you guys here. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Ina. Good to see you. Hi, Jillian. Oh, don't worry about it. Do not worry about that. <laughs> the stories I could tell you. <laughs> Hi, Sylvia. Hi, Jane. Yeah, there's stories we could have. We could talk about things like that, but it's Drama Free Friday. <laughs> Hi, Patty. Hi, Melody. It's so nice to have you guys join me today. We're just chatting for a second, making sure everything's doing what it's supposed to be doing. I think we're good. Just checking all the ins and outs. Hi, Nancy. Hello, Pavla. Hi, Annette. <clears throat> yep, it is Drama Free Friday, and therefore we don't worry about stuff. I almost said a bad word. <laughs> that would take it straight from Drama Free into not Drama Free. So, I'm going to have a little tea while we chat, and everybody gets a chance to come in. Hi, Dorothy. Hi, Sherry Spatz. Haven't seen you for ages. Good to see you. Hi, Maureen and Brenda. Hi, Cindy. Cindy's showing offline. I'm here. Tell Cin Somebody tell Cindy. Hi, Monique. Somebody tell Cindy to refresh. Because I'm here and online. <laughs> hey, Alice. Good to see you. Hey, Auntie Michael JZ. Cheers, everybody, to a great day. Hope you're having... An absolutely fabulous day. Hi, Anna. Hope you're having a good day. And if you're not having a good day, I hope I can give you a break from whatever's going on. How's that? <clears throat> Anna is Bright Meadow. Okay. I should write that on here so I know. Hi, Marion. Oh, free week ahead. Nice. Uh oh, Melissa's stuck in a cubicle. Whoo! Hi, Rowesta. I have a bunch of old stuff, old journal things to show you. So, yeah. So, I'm going to show you. I've got different kinds. And uh, some of them are family. Most of them are family related. Some of them were gifted to me. But I thought it would just be fun, fun to to go through them and talk a little bit about journaling. <clears throat> okay, Anna, good. Is, is it Anna or Anna? I'm going to say Anna until you correct me. Feel free to correct me. You can always correct my pronunciation. Hi, Dana. Dana's quilting on a customer's quilt. Good for you, Dana. That's wonderful. I'm so happy to hear you're doing that. <clears throat> Dana does, um, she has a big mom pajama quilting frame, quilting, yeah, quilting frame and the computerized setup that goes with it and stuff. It's, she's got quite a setup, which is really great. It's really great. <clears throat> okay. And Anna, okay. Yeah, pronunciations vary so many places, don't they? It's really hard to mess up my name, although people mess it up all the time. <laughs> my first name has four letters in it, B-A-R-B, and it gets spelled every kind. You can't imagine how many ways B-A-R-B can get misspelled. <laughs> okay, cool, Anna, thanks. Hi, Lori. Uh, <laughs> Nancy, Patience Grasshopper. Patience. He has been hard, hard at work on that. 
hard, hard at work on the mandala cores. You can't believe everything I know. There, it's just I've I've stopped talking about it because I finally just had to just relax and surrender to the process. And whenever it gets done, it gets done, right? Because the amount of time and work that goes into the the stuff that no one ever sees is hours and hours and hours and hours and weeks of work that go into it to make it seamless and easy to use. The easier it is to use, I can tell you, the more work has gone into it. So if he shows up, pat him on the back. <laughs> Hi, Carla. Well, sometimes it may have been spelled like that, actually. Um, Melissa, it could have been spelled that way. It's been spelled a variety of ways. <laughs> oh, I look like I froze. I'm blowing you a kiss. Okay, Patty. <laughs> Hi, Josie Webb. Good to have you here. It's frozen for you guys? Really? It's not It's not frozen on my broadcast um, screen, so I don't know. And I, my signal strength is very high, so I don't know about, you just have to keep, you'll just have to keep refreshing, I guess. I don't know what else to tell you. Hi, Yvonne. Um, okay, anybody that I missed? Okay, what did Cindy say? Oh, Cindy, that's wonderful. Today is a good week. She just told she was cancer free. That is phenomenal, Cindy. Phenomenal. I am so, that just could not be any better. That just could not be any better news for any of us. That makes, yeah. Okay, Barb can't get into drama. Happy Tears Celebration. Okay. Hey, APG. Hi, Judy Patootie. Um, hi, Kimberly. All right. Whew. Got me going. I have to say, it's not hard to get me going. So, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Hi, Ellen. Uh, hey, Mary Marlowe. Kasha. <laughs> oh, it is very good. Happy tears. Anytime, you know, here's the thing. Anytime you can celebrate with someone, whether it's tearful or turning cartwheels, we got to do that because that multiplies. The joy. OK, hey, Dorothy. Ah. All right, so let's just jump into it, shall we? All right, let me get the illegal fluids off the table. Um, I don't see the technical department, but anytime I start giving him some smack, he'll show up. <laughs> it's very warm here today. And so, um, I don't know why tears make your nose run, and I don't need to know the technical explanation, but they just do. It's warm here today, so if you see a shadow up over my head, that's because there's a ceiling fan on. If you hear a whirring, that's because there's another fan on the floor, because it's warm. Uh, <laughs> Cindy says, if I could do a cartwheel, I would be crying. Yeah, yeah exactly. <clears throat> Allie sending me virtual tissues. Yeah, you know, the thing about when you stream, you that um, I sit here with many people in the chat, but I'm here by myself other than the sponsors who are safely behind door number one back here. <clears throat> and I think Muppet's on the floor over here laying down, keeping track of 
you know, she watches the world to make sure everything is safe here. Um, but, you know, it's amazing how being by myself and talking to everyone, you just never quite know when something is going to sneak up and, and jerk the, um, the little thing inside of you that turns on the, the waterworks. It does happen. It does happen. And um, I think that's because, you know, I tend to be a little more... I don't know if sensitive's the word, but um, open-hearted, maybe I don't know. Anyway, it's not the tears. What I'm, the point is, the tears are never too far below the surface. Um, I got used to that quite a few years ago. One of my best friends had cerebral palsy, and her name was Lucy. And I met her when I had a retail business. She came and called on me and wanted to do desktop desktop publishing for me this was back before any of us I mean I it was before computers desktop computers were popular and available and of course there was no such thing as a laptop at that point this was back in the 80s and um, and she came to call on me and she wanted to do desktop publishing for me and Lucy's cerebral palsy had affected her speech pretty pretty profoundly and it, and it affected her body a lot because she was in a wheelchair and stuff and so it took us a long time to learn to communicate she understood me fine you know there was nothing wrong with her brain it was just physical stuff um, but it took me a long time to learn her speech patterns and and you know how to communicate with her she was she could type better than most people and she would type with two fingers just like this that's how she typed she was incredible and but one of the things I had to learn about Lucy was that and she was the one that told me this that I don't know if it's all people with cerebral palsy or if it was her specific uh, way that it affect impacted her body but her emotions were real close to the surface real close and um, so I mean I could be talking to her and we could be talking about something real funny she would start crying we could talk about something that was that was I didn't think it was even sad and she'd start crying and when she cried she was really loud <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, you know you just have to wait till the tears passed and I I think she gave me some of that close to the surface emotion I think I learned that from her so anyway um okay just check in the chat for a second all right hi bratty patty and hi margaret okay so let's um get crack a lacking my name is barb owen if you're new to my channel thank you so much for popping in I hope that you enjoy being around the first part of this live stream which happens every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time the first part of it for the first oh, 15 20 minutes maybe even a little bit more than 20 minutes we just chat that way everybody gets a chance to come into the chat room and um, yeah so you can just be here and and we just chat for a little bit if you look in the description box below the video that you'll see below the video window you'll see that there is a sign up a link for a sign up you can sign up there and we'll send you an email you can click the little bell below the the video window and get a notification there's a variety of ways to get notified that I'm on live so um, but the big thing is I'm on every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern with very very few exceptions so you're always welcome to be here and just join us and have fun and um, I it, and we call it drama free Friday simply because there is a lot of drama in the world as of course we all know from the unfortunately it happens more and more frequently and I think that's why things like this and creativity becomes so important because we just really need those you, you can't be you can't be on high alert every moment of every day and not have it impact your health your mental health um, your emotional health you have to have breaks from uh, the intensity of life and so I'm here to give you a break and I hope that that's how you um, perceive what goes on here 
So it is called Drama Free Friday for that reason. We don't do drama here. And that includes, um, we just leave any high impact subject outside the studio. So we just leave it out there. Um, we don't generally have trouble with, um, with people getting wound up in discussions. But some of the things that we just don't talk about around here in the chat are uh, politics and religion and um, because those just tend to be subjects that are so, uh, people have very, very strong emotions and can get really um, wound up in, for lack of a better term. So, anyway. So what we're going to do today, we're going to do a couple of things. First of all, <clears throat> I was gifted some old ephemera. And so I thought I would show you that. And then I'm going to show you some old journals that I have collected over the years. And I thought that um, we would talk a little bit about journaling and why a person would journal. Because there are people that say, well, there's no reason to journal because there's no one to leave it for. And <clears throat> which, exactly, Annette, you got it. <laughs> Annette got the... Annette got the whole drama-free thing in just one little sentence. Um, so we're just going to talk about why a person would journal. You know, uh, in my in my opinion, I think you should journal. But then that is <laughs> that's because that's because I do it. Don't you know that any of us that are, are really strongly um, feel strongly about a certain thing, we think the whole world should do it, <laughs> which you know. Not necessarily so. But anyway, I'm going to show you some of the old ephemera stuff that I was gifted this week. Because keep your keep your eyes and ears and everything open in case people want to share stuff with you. It's always good for um, using in other journal projects or using in art projects and so forth. And if not, you can always give it to someone else. Hey, Deborah. Hey, Elizabeth. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these things. Now, some of these are are newer than others. The first one I'm going to show you, this is, and some of you may know what these are, and then again, you may not. But these were Stanley Home product cu gift cu coupons. I stumbled over that sufficiently. Let me show them to you up close. Yeah, we'll just look at this stuff here, so it's really close. Stanley Home Products gift coupons, 100 points. So Stanley Home Products, I, I don't even know if the Stanley Company is still around, but uh, they're like kind of like a direct marketing type thing, in-home party kind of thing. And if you had enough parties or you bought enough stuff, you got coupons like this. And uh, so I thought, oh, those would be fun to use in a journal page or whatever. Hi, Shu. Exactly. Monique said, um, who cares if someone is left behind for it? It's for your happiness. That's right. Um, Elizabeth said her friend Anna B. just messaged her to let her know that I was on. Good. That's great. I'm so glad she did. Um, so, anyway, fun. Uh, Marion says she has a journal kept by a great, great, great uncle in the 1880s for his travels. Oh, how cool. How cool is that? Um, so this is a bank book. Um, one of the things, and you can see this is from 1914. One of the things that's really amazing is the handwriting. And if you've never, one of the reasons I, I love these old books and old journals is because of the handwriting. Um, it's just, you know, you just can't beat the beauty of old handwriting. And that's not calligraphy. That's the way she actually wrote. Hi, Nicole. And one of the things that's funny about this is that inside the bank book, this is, uh, it says good cake making. So there's an article in here that she's pasted in on good cake making. And this one is corn canned with salt. So those were, were glued inside her bank book. Another thing that's interesting about these old books is that in order to keep the pages 
to know what page you were on, they were perforated in the corner, and so you could tear off the corner. That way you knew what page you were on. Yeah. Stanley has merged with Fuller Brush. Ah, oh, okay, cool. And, yeah, the Fuller Brush Man, that was, that was always, when I was a kid, that was always a highlight at our house when the Fuller Brush Man would come to the door and he would I, I don't even know what kind of brushes they sold but at that point in time it was all brushes and, and uh, different kinds of tools like that there wasn't they didn't have any chemicals or you know things that they um, you know liquid type stuff that they sold that was when I was a little girl and it was just it was just such a highlight when the fuller brush man came to call <laughs> you know, oh the memory hadn't thought about that in a long time <laughs> And over here, this one is um, a full-blooded Creek Indian gives a remedy for rattlesnake bites. That's what this is. By way of introduction, he says, an Indian never dies from the bite of a mad dog. You will see the greatest curiosity on earth if you ever see an Indian with rabies. They have this remedy for rattlesnake poison and mad dog bites. Let the snake go along about his business. <laughs> This is good. Okay, so step one. Let the snake go along about his business. Run to the house and get an onion about two inches in diameter and about three cents worth of strong tobacco. Then cut two tablespoonfuls of, then get two tablespoonfuls of salt. Cut the onion and the tobacco up pretty fine with a knife. Well, you're, okay. <laughs> Let me just say this. If you've been bit by a rattlesnake and you have time to go run to the house and get all those things and chop them up, you're doing pretty good. Somebody else better be doing that. <laughs> okay, mix in, mix well in the salt. This makes a poultice. Place on the wound. Make a new poultice every 12 hours and the wound will never swell. Apply as soon as possible. Copied from the Herald and Pres Presbyter by Mrs. A.W.A whoever that is. <laughs> Bye, Yvonne. Good to see you. And this one at the bottom is when fruit is scarce. So you can see that she has, um, you know, these little books like this were important for lots of reasons. And so she put, put everything that was valuable in here. And she kept track of her money. So, yeah. So here's her, her ciphering. And this is about chickens. So apparently she uh, she sold chickens. And she sold all these people chickens and she ended up with $4.31. Because remember this is in 1914. And then she sold butter. So this is butter sold. This is eggs sold. This is in 1917. Let's see if the chickens, she say what the, so she had 1914, 1916. Yeah, in 1916 she sold the chickens and she got $4.31 for all those chickens. And so forth. So, isn't that interesting? And it goes up through 1922. So this one little book, and there's still a page left, this one little book went from 1914 to 1922. Um, this was a memorandum, so this is another little book. This one is pretty fragile. This one doesn't have anything written in it, um, so they didn't have much to keep track of. <laughs> Richard Maury Emerson didn't have much to keep track of, uh, but it's a cool old book, and it's got cool paper in it and so forth. So that was interesting. I thought this was really cool. Medical Danger Signals by Dr. Walter C. Alvarez, and this is the Mayo Clinic. Yes, uh, but this is, yes, medical danger signals. Good housekeeping special arrangement. This is an unabridged book, by the way, unabridged. Yeah. <laughs> so when you open this up and you start paging through it, there's... Um, there's things, trouble with the lungs, special diseases of women. These pages are really quite fragile. 
Um, and so there's a lot of stuff, dangerous, danger signals in middle and later life. Some of these things are really interesting to me to read just simply because you want to see how, how the world has changed. So, and the introduction's back here at the back. So, anyway, I just thought that was really interesting. But it has long since fallen apart, so it was gifted to me with a paper clip around it. But it's the medical danger signals. <laughs> okay. Um, this one I thought was really interesting. This one is um, house paint for barns, floors, uh, or barns, fences, roofs, floors, buggy and carriage paint, and so forth. But this is really, this is a neat old book, or neat old, I think it's probably more of a pamphlet, but it has paint brushes, um, and then somebody stuck this in. This was a 30 cent favor for 15 cents, a coffee money saver. Yeah. So here you had um, this was apparently a uh, you could buy five pounds of coffee for eighty cents. You can't do that anymore, can you? Mm -mm. But all of the paint samples, these are all put in here one at a time. Isn't that cool? Interesting stuff. With with papers placed in between to keep them neat and tidy. Yeah. And this is from Montgomery Ward and Company. Interesting. Isn't that cool? And then this, um, this book was, this is, let's see if I can show you. Oh, this is a receipt book. And so this is from 1923. This is for $18.65. I don't know what it was for. Here was another one, a receipt for $6. Um, $8, work on the road. Um, work on the road, $8.60. Um, gravel. Looks like $15. That was a big one. So those are all old receipt papers with some of them used up. But it's just an interesting shape, you know? Interesting shape. Oh, Muriel, bless your heart. Now, this are some other things I wanted to show you. These were um, also gifted to me. These, I just want you to see that composition books are not new. <laughs> <laughs> they are not new. This is from 1941. And this composition notebook is different than the size we have today. Excuse my reach. I'll show you the ones. I'll show you the size difference from today's composition notebooks. Again, excuse my reach as I'm getting stuff. This is the, a regular composition notebook that you buy, like at Walmart or an office supply store. So you can see the difference. So this one from 1941 is smaller. Yeah. Amazing. Bye, Ina. Good to see you. Hi, Joyce. Miss Moon Rose Joyce, good to see you. So this is a composition book, and in it is just the, you know, the lined paper, just like the others. They are stitched together. Let me see if I can find the middle of the book, right here. They're stitched together, just like the composition notebooks are today. They're still stitched together as one signature. And, um, but just interesting. It's all, she's dated everything. She's put asterisks in to divide things. Um, a lot of, you know, it's just a lot of her, her words, a rainy day, winter prayer meeting, um, this is about her husband, it was his 38th birthday. Uh, seems like only a few days since he was 18. That was her husband. 
and so forth. But anyway, just, um, just really cool, isn't it? And that was how she started it out. Every man's life is a diary in which he is meant to write one story and writes another. And in his humblest hours is when he reads the story he vowed he would not write. That's what she wrote there. Isn't that cool? And still the useful information that we still find inside unless you write it out or paint it out, which I did here. I painted it out in this one. And then there's more of the information in the back, which I haven't painted out. And so you can see it's the useful information on the old one. And this one doesn't say useful information on the new one. But anyway, cool, huh? Dorothy has her dad's diary from World War I and his drawing book from school in the 1900s. How cool is that? And here's another one. This is yet another size. And so this one is more like what, what we have today. So this is closer to the size that we have today. It's a little bit wider than the current model of composition notebooks. It's interesting how people would just, they just put tape on things. When they start falling apart, they just taped them back together. So this has, looks like duct tape under here and then masking tape to hold it together. And this one, um, as many people did, they used their, um, their journals or their books like this, which you can see is falling apart. They just stick things into it, right? So they just stuffed loose papers and loose um, pictures and newspaper articles and um, things from funerals all got stuffed in there. And this one, the cover is separate from the pages. And it's very interesting because this was, this she was doing genealogy on here. And so this book, she was keeping track of lots of different things. So this was not so much her own personal writings as it was things she was keeping track of. And um, so part of it's genealogical some of its birthdays and then there's just all kinds of stuff shoved in the pages and then you get so far and there's no more entries. <clears throat> I just think it's really interesting and this was a later this was a later book than the small one but I think it's interesting and I find myself I know don't know about you guys but even in my journals I find myself stuffing things in them <laughs> So it's not new. They've been doing this for a long time. Okay, what else? Here's one. Now this was um, something that was given to me also. Someone sent this to me. And this is an old journal. Uh, bill. This is a bill book, it says. This one doesn't have anything in it. It has nothing in it. But it's an interesting shape. So this is long. You know, most of them are long and narrow the other way. This one is long and narrow this way. So, But this makes, you know, there's nothing in this. There's no writing. You don't have to think about, um, you don't have to think anything about filling it with stuff at all. And so this one would make a great art journal. And this one was stitched together. You can see the stitching back here at the back. So that, that makes a great art journal, especially you don't have to think about it because it's something that doesn't have anything in it. This one is a really interesting one. Now, in the description box below the video, the, I did find some current new style journals or ledgers and I did put some links down there so if you want to check those out if you're looking for a book like this I know that in our local office supply store these are very very expensive for whatever reason they seem to be more uh, more reasonable on Amazon uh, but I just thought I would show you this one this one is from 1939 <coughs> and I'm going to show this one to you over here because it's a little easier to show you. 
This one, the it's holding together. This is cloth, and it is holding together um, kind of barely, <laughs> but it's holding together. So it's got all kinds of uh, information in it, and it also is indexed, um, you know, your pages. I think this was intended to be, you know, like your table of contents. Yeah. So that's what this is meant to be, is for you to create your table of contents. Once you get past the table of contents, then you get over into the actual recording of things. And it's, it's quite interesting to read through some of the, the things that they were keeping track of for whatever reason. Um, this seemed to be mostly things that they were... Um, mostly seemed to be things that were people were um, either money they were spending or things that people owed you know money that people owed them um, that seemed to be a lot a lot of that so as you go through you can see a lot of a lot of addition and subtraction and very little of it goes up past ten dollars most of it's like five dollars and nine cents this one was 61.87 that was a big one um and so forth and then you get back you know again lots of things stuck in you know just stuck in the various pages and um Just, I, I just find it fascinating. I don't know if you guys find this as interesting as I do, but I just thought I would share it with you. Because if you ever run on to things like this, it is um, remarkable to, you know, to add them to your stuff. And then you can, you know, use them as art journals. If they're not family things or anything you want to keep track of, I would not think twice about using it as an art journal. If it was something that uh, was meaningful, you might want to think about that. One of the cool things about these old ledgers and journals is that page numbers are on, you know, already on there. This might look like it's mildewed or, or moldy, but this is not. This is graphite from the pencil. But this this one I have never seen one that was big and thick like this, which is pretty cool. Um, another way to journal is for uh, is to have baby books and use baby books. Just making myself some room here. I think journals are just really great ways of keeping track of things. Um, so this is a very small baby book. I have some others that are larger. Um, you can learn a lot about people by what they do or don't fill in. And, and on top of that, looking at the illustrations is fascinating just fascinating and it's not unusual that you'll see um, baby books start out with a lot of information in the beginning and then it you know kind of gets less and less toward the the latter part because mothers get busy babies babies grow up and so forth and so on again stuff stuck in you know interesting things stuck in and uh, this, I think, was, yeah. This is a little creepy. This is hair. <laughs> a little creepy. And so forth. Anyway, so baby books are very interesting to keep track of information. One of the things I love about these old books is getting to see handwriting. Handwriting from people. I just think that... There's nothing quite like letting your handwriting speak. Um, you can tell a lot about someone's handwriting. So a couple of other baby books. This, so you can see, again, the handwriting, the images, the illustrations. In these, or what, this one, there was a lot of image and very few places to write by comparison. Again, things stuck in. And this was much, this was how they used to send uh, pictures. They would put them on postcards. So you can see they would put them on postcards. And that was often how they sent the, the um, 
pictures to people. In Italy, every mother keeps a strand of her baby's hair. Yeah, the, and that's common here as well. It's just, you know, it's kind of, it's just a little creepy to me for some reason. <laughs> so, interesting book. This one happened to be, this was my mother's baby book. My mother was born in 1911, so you can tell how old that is. Uh, this one happens to be my dad's baby book. And again, this has a lot of uh, just, this is the way I received it. Stuff stuck into it. And, you know, things that were of value um, to someone and they just stuck them, stuck them in here. So it kind of, even though it was a baby book, that had information that had to do with... Um, you know, him when he was much older. This was my dad's stuff, and this was uh, this was one of his great great cards. Yeah. And this was some of my dad's handwriting when he was a child. 1917, so he would have been six years old. So you can tell by the artwork, it is similar to the other one that was my mother's. You know, a similar type of illustrations, because they were born the same year. In fact, um, interestingly, the same woman delivered both my parents. That that was done with the midwife back then, and um, yeah, they were both delivered by the same woman. So, so just a lot of interesting things, and again, a lot of things left unfilled out. Um, and then you have the end. So baby books, baby books can be wonderful journals and wonderful information for people. Okay, let's look at a couple of others. I only have a few more to show you. I don't know if this is boring you to death, but I just decided I would take the time and show them to you because I think that journals are, um, and writing things down, I just, you know, first of all, First of all, the reason I write journals and I keep and I have dozens of journals, the reason I do it is I, I do it to keep from exploding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right, Judy. Um, baby teeth. Yeah, that's another one. That's another one that uh, is a little creepy. <laughs> I found uh, when my mom passed away, I found all my baby teeth in a little thing. I'm like, mm, no, I'm not keeping those. Mm -mm. <laughs> Don't need those. <laughs> so, um, but that's why I journal. I journal not so much for thinking in terms of future generations. I journal to keep from blowing up. <laughs> and any of you that journal will know what I mean by that. Um, not only do I, and I sometimes incorporate art or design into my journals, and sometimes it's just pages and pages of words. And someday it will make a great bonfire. <laughs> okay, so let's go back to this one. This is another, uh, there are some books that are called record books, and some that are called journals, and some that are called ledgers. This one is a record book, and this one happens to be my mother's, and this was one of her many recipe books. And um, she tended to do, like other people did, in that she would put notes in this as well as recipes, and this was her, in, or her uh, table of contents. So you can see she started over here with page number one, and once she filled it all up to here, then, then she had to come over here and she had to add more. So, Yeah, it, it truly is to keep from blowing up. It's the truth. Now, the pages in here are getting very, very fragile. Um, but this is these are all recipes. This is how the recipes, how she kept track of recipes from um, anything that, that people gave to her. So she would write them in this book. And when you feel this, you can feel the flour and the sugar, mostly flour. So you can feel it in on the pages. I watched her use this book for many, many years. 
And one of the things she did that was really interesting is she always wrote down where the recipe came from. Um, you know, so who the person was. And one of my other favorite things, and I don't know if I'll come across it in any of these, but she also noted whether she liked it or not. <laughs> I might be able to find one of those. And then if she were uh, feeling good about this, she would let one of us girls write in her precious recipe book. And most of the brown pages in here, this is from use. You know, most of this brown around the edges especially, that's from being used. And so she's added some notes, but this is handwriting of either, it's probably one of my sisters. Uh, same thing here. So lots of recipes in here. And then she got to the point where there were a few of them that she got tired of writing in, so she would tape them in or glue them in. Um, and she also noted on here like this is a McClellan family recipe this happened to be a recipe from my family and she wrote where that came from <laughs> yeah no I won't be using this one for uh, for journaling in I'm just showing you this one and so this one she even dated 1963 and so forth so there are lots and lots of uh, recipes in here I was trying to find one that that uh, maybe she didn't like. Maybe I'll run across one. And the recipes had interesting names, like this one is Yummy Salad. And that says Mom, so that's I think that's one she might have made up. <laughs> and this is someone else's handwriting, so whoever she gave her book to and said, here, write that down, wrote that recipe in. So someone else's handwriting. And... So here we go. <laughs> this looks great. Okay, you ready for this? Let me see if I can show this to you. Let me rearrange things here. I want to show this one to you up close. Okay. See if I can get it in the in the frame here. My computer's in the way. Here we go. Grape nuts pie. Okay. See what it says right there? Not so good. With a big X through it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I thought you guys might get you all might get a kick out of that so she didn't tear it out she just put an X through it said not so good she did that here's another one orange slice bread or cake not too good so you know she she added um, notations as she went through yeah Again, stuff stuck in. I'm telling you, it is, uh, oh, here's re uh, recipe cards. So, you know, stuff stuck in here. Here's a recipe that didn't make it into the book yet. And then at the back, let's see if this is the one. Again, this is someone else's handwriting. So as you go through, you just find stuff that's been slotted in, things that were important to her. Much of it has to do with food because this was her recipe book. And then you get toward the back, let's see. And toward the back, let's see, is it in this one? Um, yeah, we have a recipe here for modeling clay. So we have something about modeling clay. And then um, she bought a sponge mop on May 24, 1958. She bought a new one, July 1961. Um, then she bought something at um, a furniture, something she bought at a furniture store. So they, she tended to use her journal, her recipe books also as um, ways to keep track of things other than recipes. And she rebound it with duct tape so you can tell that's a more modern a more modern recipe book then when she got even more modern she translated I don't know what made her keep this because she translated her recipes into other books and so I'll just briefly go through a couple of these 
Um, so this was another one of her books, and then she also had a letter stuck in it, which had a recipe, so that's why it made it in the book. This has uh, this is this is a bag from Navy Beans, but it has a recipe on it, so she just punched holes in it and stuck it in the book. Easy. So this is all full of all different kinds of recipes. You know, this is a cream cheese container. Uh, the foil around cream cheese. It's put in, this is a straight pin. So she's stuck it in here with a straight pin. But there's a recipe on it. And so forth. So there's that one. This, you know, this was really getting modern because this had the recipe dividers and, um, and three ring paper that you could actually go buy refills for. So lots of, and there may be recipes that, um, that you know are in one book and then also in the other one I don't know this is a really interesting section here I'm going to show this to you also when I was a kid very small we had an exchange I don't know if she was an exchange student or what but she was from Korea and she lived with us for I think a year and so she did a feast for us one time and so this was, these are the recipes in her handwriting. And she shows right here, these are her instructions as to how to roll the egg roll. And you can see she's got her writing up here. And, uh, you know, more instructions, more instructions with drawings. And you can see the drawings up here. So I thought that was... And then, you know, the written in her hand in her language, both American or English and Korean. But that was really pretty cool. So that was one of her. And here she started out cranberry bread, but she never wrote the recipe. So she must have got waylaid there, got busy. So there's one, and she wanted me to have that, so she put my name on it in ink so nobody else would take it. And this is one of her other books. Now this one is also a journal, a ledger. Okay, so this is a ledger book, but it's a different shape than the ledgers that I showed you earlier. This one is not long and um, skinny. This is more the size of a composition notebook, but it's very thick. But nevertheless, it is a ledger book or a record book. And this one tended to have more like stuff that she, uh, you know, like they bought a coffee maker. This was, she purchased it in 2000, so she kept the instructions in here. There's, um, she's now started, you know, gluing recipes in. Somebody give her a recipe so she'd tape it in. But once again, she made an index and, and put the page numbers and um, all that sort of thing. So she dedicated several pages this time to recipes because it's a big, thick book. And so there's lots and lots of recipes. There's also empty pages. And then <clears throat> toward the back of this, in the back part of the book, she has a record of things that they did for freezing and canning. So she kept track, you know, of freezing and canning operations. Um, bulbs that they planted. This is my dad's handwriting. So these are bulbs that they planted, um, where they planted them, where they got them. Um, this was, you know, uh, they bought a general electric stove. So they put the serial number in. I mean, it's just such random stuff, you know random random and then more things just chucked in the book that were too valuable to throw away and here if you want to know how to clean a steam iron yes there's the information on that as well and this is um she bought this at parker appliance on may 3rd 1968 so she stuck it in a recipe book i guess so she didn't lose it anyway interesting huh So some other uh, ways to journal, 
uh, and these were done these are old this is my mother's autograph book and so this was very common to do when she was young this is in 1925 and in 1928 it was very common when people would come to visit that they you would have them write in an autograph book and so these are all different people writing messages to um, to my mom so lots of different handwriting different colors of paper and so forth this is from her mother this was a message written to her mother in 1940 this is a message written in 1995 from my dad to my mother so this little book span spanned a long period of time um, but that was an autograph book and one of the things that is really important to me about this is seeing all the different handwriting even though I may not know the people being able to see the handwriting you can you can learn a lot about someone by their handwriting so that is another kind of journal this little bitty thing this little bitty journal Again, this is another kind of journal, a little pocket journal. This one was written in 1904. And this is, um, this was, you can hardly see a lot of the stuff in here now, but this was my grandfather's journal. And it was a way he kept track of um, different expenses and so forth. I also have another one. He worked on the railroad as an engineer and I have another one someplace that that keeps track of where he kept track of his um, travels and journal journeys and expenses and so forth. But this was in 190, 1904. And interestingly over here on this side he was practicing different ways of writing his name, signing his name and so forth. So I thought that was fun. But it was more common for someone, a man, I think, to have a small journal so he could just stick it in his pocket. Yeah, just stick it in his pocket. And then um, two more to show you. When my mom moved in with me, she was 90 years old when she moved in with me, and I wanted her um, to, she had never kept a diary or done any writing as such. She was too busy. And so when she moved in, before she moved in with me, I asked her, I took her to the store and I had her buy um, any book that she wanted and so she just, so that she would write in this book. And so this is what she wrote at the beginning. This is March 29th, 2002. This was just a few weeks after my father passed away. She said, this is a notebook I plan to use for my thoughts and ideas as I enter a different life, a life without my Jimmy being so close as we had been for over 65 and a half years. So that's how she started her journal. And then she filled this entire journal. So she was 90 years and above. Look at her handwriting. And it is just random thoughts about whatever she was thinking about at the time. So you're never, the point is, you're never too old to start writing. If you haven't written up till now, it's okay to start. And then this was her second journal. And she started this one in 2005. So she wrote this one from 2002 until 2005, and then she started this one. And her handwriting went from the very strong cursive writing to printing. And this was, um, this was very, this, the entries got shorter and shorter and much more difficult for her to write, but she kept it up and she wrote, um, through 2005 her thoughts let's see what did she say her thoughts and ideas yeah thoughts and ideas so why do I show you all this stuff because I want to know do you guys keep a journal do you write in a journal do you keep an art journal what kind of things do you do so those of you watching the recording um, I would love to know your comments so you can leave your comments in the description box below the video. Those of you that are here in the live chat, you can just tell me, you know, do you journal? 
Do you keep a journal, whether it's an art journal or a written journal? Do you do that? Um, because I just am interested in to know that. And I also would like to encourage you, if you don't, and you haven't up to now, I would like to encourage you to go get, if you go get a, um, I've got it buried under here now. We'll just use this one. Go get a composition notebook, okay? Composition notebooks cost maybe a dollar, a dollar and a half at a discount store. You don't have to pay a lot of money for a composition notebook, and you can just start writing in it. They make good art journals. They make good journals for writing in. Um, you can get as fancy as you want to with journals. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to write look, look here at the comments for a minute because I haven't honestly been reading the comments. So if I missed any comments to you guys, I apologize. Write them in again. Um, yeah, exactly. They, they just kind of do that, you know. Melissa says her great grandfather's journal ended and just uh, ended. It just kind of petered out. Yeah, they do. They just kind of, you know, they kind of drift off. It depends on, you know, a lot of factors. Um, Muriel says she journals every day. Wait a minute. I just scrolled too past it. Um, used to journal, have one from 18 to 25. Okay. Elizabeth journals in different ways, lots of different ways. Uh, Josie writes, puts in pictures and memories from concerts and other things. So yours is a little bit more along the line of a scrapbook or smash book type um, type journal, right? That's what I would that's what I would call it. I don't know if that's what you call it, but that's kind of what I would call it. Sort of a tracking of of your everyday life, which is great. Um, Ellen says she used to, but she doesn't anymore. Nancy keeps both kinds of journals. Uh, three current art journals. Cool. Kim. Hi, Kim. Uh, she's a written journal, and she just started art journaling. All sorts journal. That's great. Um, Fobonichi. Yep. Joyce says her life is too boring. <laughs> I don't believe that. Some people journal, but not consistently. Yep. Well, here's the thing. If you think your life is boring, you can always work with an art journal. And that, that even though you're not writing about your daily life and stuff, that still is going to function as a journal to, um, to let, for you, if nothing else, it lets you know where you were at different times in your in your life your week your month your year and I think an art journal is is a great way to journal as well um, so lots of people have all sorts the journal that they kind of call all sorts um, Jamie does not journal and Deborah collects empty journals there you go <laughs> I understand and let me tell you this in no way is to say to you to make you feel bad or to make you um, you know to try to guilt you into journaling that's not what this is about at all what this was about is to give you um, an interesting look back in time at some ways that other people journaled um, and also if people offer you you know, if they gift you stuff like, you know, the stuff I showed you today, if they gift you things like ephemera, you know, from days gone by and that sort of thing, I, it's wonderful to look at it. It's also great to use it if it doesn't contain emotional, um, significant, you know, historical, whatever. I say use it. That's what I say. So anyway. Um... Joyce wrote in her diary the day she broke her ankle. Good for you. Uh, Pablo says, oh, the empty journals. I bound three journals in the past week. Good for you. Hi, Ilona. Yeah, there's something about collecting. I, for a long time, I did not understand my own fascination with blank books. I had the most amazing collection of blank books. None of them had much in them. 
but I kept buying them because they were so pretty and there was some kind of draw about the blank book for me and I couldn't figure out what it was until I started actually journaling and filling things up and, and adding art into them and things like that. You know, my, my journals tend to be separate. Art journals or write, written journals, they tend to be separate, but not always. So, um, I know, it's hard to pass them up. So this is an interesting book, and this there's a link to this in the description box. This book you can pick up for very little money. Um, this, is, this is a good book, I think. And so I just thought I would share it with you because I happened to think about it this week. Journal Spilling. And this is by Diana Trout. This book came out in 2006 or 7 or... No, 2009. And uh, Diana Trout's pretty active in social media. But she has a lot of information in here. If you're new to art journaling, this, is, this has got some... Uh, this is not... She doesn't do the kind of art journaling that is... Um, beautiful pretty pages shall we say her art journaling style is more of journaling and art as opposed to you can see that as opposed to you know uh, I'm going to use these supplies and I'm going to make this pretty page and so forth nothing wrong with that believe me there's nothing wrong with doing that but this tends to be a little bit more um, mm, a little more raw in some ways maybe anyway she's got a lot of technique in here a lot of um, interesting techniques a lot of interesting ideas and so forth this was probably one of the very first books I bought about art journaling you know I, I was doing stuff before that but I didn't know it had a name and this this has really got was probably one of the books that really piqued my interest in the whole concept of art journaling. Of course, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of books that have come out since this, since then, since this one was published, but I still go back and refer to this from time to time. Hey, Shirley. So, anyway. So this is Journal Spilling, Mixed Media Techniques for Free Expression by Diana Trout. So it's just a, an idea for you. There is a link in the description box below the video if you want to take a look at that. Okay. Whew. That was a long-winded... That was a long-winded chat about journals. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it a little bit and um, got some ideas. Okay. I'm going to have to set stuff off this chair because it's going to all fall down, so... I'm going to be disappearing out of the picture for a minute. <clears throat> Just to move things out of the way here for a minute. So keep your eyes open because you never know when you're going to find things that are very interesting in the um, journaling realm. Okay. All right. So that was what I wanted to talk to you about this week. What we're going to do now is we're going to finish what we kind of played around with. Well, I don't know if we'll get it finished, but we're going to we're going to get started on it anyway. Last week we made some paper feathers and I didn't do anything to them. I left them exactly as they were. I did not make any more feathers. I just have the ones that we did last week. And I was gifted a beautiful feather in my backyard by a blue jay. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, so Blue Jay left me a present. Actually, my husband found it in the backyard and brought it in for me. Okay, so we have paper feathers here. And we did these last week using, um, I created 
the paper with a jelly uh, with the gel press. I was using the large gel press plate and I'm reaching for something. Um, and then I used this particular feather die from Tim Holtz and cut out the, the feathers and that was this size feather right here. Okay. So that was the size feather that I used. Then I enlarged it and I hand make it made a pattern and enlarged it and cut out big feathers myself. So the die, these are not die cut, these are hand cut. Okay. Cindy made a lot of feathers. Cool. Hi Gail. The nothing book. I don't remember that. Hi Travis, good to see you my friend. Haven't seen you for a while. Nice to see you in the chat. Bye Melissa, thanks for being here. Okay, so we have feathers. I have a stick. And so we're going to make a mobile. Actually, I have several sticks, but we're going to use this one, I think, or this one. Which one should we use? I'm going to use this one because I like it. I like the shape of it. This is a stick from the oak tree in my backyard. And so we are going to um, add some stuff to this. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, these word stickers from... Tim Holtz, just because I love these so much. Small Talk, Big Chat, and Chit Chat sticker pads. Uh, these, to me, these are some, this is such a great value. These are, this one has 478 stickers. This one has 290, 296 stickers. This has 1,088 stickers. And I know he has another one, at least one more of these out. Um, to me, these are great, and you can use them for so many things. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make a mobile out of this. And this was inspired by one of the Somerset Studio publications. And I think it was Somerset Life. The author of the article was Lynn. And I want to say her name was Moncrief, but that's probably not pronounced correctly. Um, but she did an article with this kind of inspiration mobile idea and so I'm I did not buy the magazine so I'm just kind of doing my own thing about it okay so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go through here and I'm gonna just pull out some of these little um, these are sayings or quotes more like sayings and these come in the white text on black and black text on white and so I'm just going to go through here. I'm not going to spend a lot of time thinking about it. I'm just going to pull out the ones that I that speak to me in the moment. And I have some Aline's Tacky Glue that I keep upside down in a can. And I'm going to add some of these to the feathers. So um, it's like whatever speaks to me in the moment, we're going to use. And I always add, even though it's a sticker, I add a little bit of glue to them, especially the fact that these are kind of uh, three-dimensional. So this one says, stay simple. Now, you can get real fancy with things like this. You can ink around the edges. You can do all that kind of thing, but I'm not after that. What I'm after is just whatever appeals to me in the moment about you know, that I find interesting and uh, uplifting and affirming in my life, that's what I'm going to use. Okay, this one is a great one, especially today, given what we're doing. Live, create, tell the story. So I like that. And, you know, you don't have to put words on your feathers. I put words on, on everything. Cards, books, feathers the sponsors <laughs> yes okay um, let's see I 
believe in yourself. So I'm literally, when you do stuff like these uh, affirmation kinds of things, you need to do, in my opinion, this is, and that's all it is, my opinion, you need to work quickly and do things that speak to you in that moment, but don't ruminate about it. Okay? Don't ruminate about it. This one is focus on what's important. And to me, that's a very important thing for me to do. Um, let's see. This is be you bravely. Sometimes it's hard to be you. Sometimes it's a lot easier to be somebody else, isn't it? It's a really good idea to be yourself. Okay, let's go to the next page. See if there's something in here. I like this one. Now, if they don't fill, you know, like this one's really long. Let's see. I'm going to cut this in a couple of spots. Just because it'll be easier to stick on my feather. So, this is live each day. with grace that happened to be my mother's name and authenticity that way it just fits on I can fit it on there a little more easily live each day with grace and authenticity yeah overthinking is death sentence to creativity that is right I love this one. <laughs> this one's going on here just because this is too funny, okay? This is just funny. I hadn't even seen this one before. <laughs> I need to read more of these. I love these little this little book. He has the best sayings and quote in here. Quotes. Now, this is not necessarily what I would call affirming, but maybe it is. It just is a good reminder. Not my circus. Not my monkeys. Yep. Not my circus. Not my monkeys. That's right. <laughs> Sometimes you got to put things on your... Uh, on your mobile just because they're funny. Mm -hmm. Live every day with intention. It is very easy to get caught in the past and the future. Very easy. Instead of intending to be present and staying in the moment okay live every day with intention so we're just going to put words on the rest of these some of them i've drawn um you know i've added the the lines on the feathers you can see this one doesn't that's okay maybe we'll put more words on this one this is probably one of my favorites ever And it is live each start each day with a grateful heart. And I'm going to add to this and
and end. So start and end each day with a grateful heart. I know, don't you love that? Oh, this is another one. These are just so good. These are really good for me. I don't know if they're good for you, but they are great for me. Remember the now. That's another thing. I can get so overwhelmed with what I have to do, with how much stuff is coming up, what has to have next week, and then week after that, and then the tonight, and tomorrow. And then I get hung up in all of that stuff and forget to be present now. Okay, let's see. What else? And here's another one that is really good for me, which is let it go. Anytime you have stuff in your life and you know we all have stuff um, you can hang on to it and ruminate and roll around in it or you can eventually decide to let it go it's a good idea to let it go it's a good idea to let it go and another one of my affirmations is best day ever and that you know not is every day wonderful and the best day ever well some of them don't turn out to be so cracking good but you know what it all depends on what you compare it to doesn't it okay so we have a pile of feathers with affirmations on them and I'm going to go back through them and just make sure that my glue and my stickum adhesive have grabbed a hold. That's right. Let it go and don't take it back. You are right, Pat. This is my favorite one, though. Not my circus, not my monkeys. <laughs> that was good. Leave each day. Okay, so we'll go through them one more time. As I do this, remember the now. Be you bravely. Sometimes you have to be brave to be you, right? Uh, but you know, it's a, it's way better to be you. It is way better to be you than to try to be somebody else. But sometimes it takes courage to be who you are. Just saying. Live every day with intention. Start and end each day with a grateful heart. Start and end each day with a grateful heart. Let it go and don't take it back. Not my circus, not my monkeys. Live each day with grace and authenticity. Focus on what's important. Yeah, I end up getting caught Focusing on the urgent, forget about the important. Believe in yourself. Live, create, tell the story, and stay simple. Yes, indeed. Okay, so we have a pile of feathers that are created that have affirmations on them. So we have those ready to go. Um, I have some words in here. Let's see if there's anything. Hi, Q. Every day you wake up is a good day. That is right, Dorothy. So let's see if there's anything in here that I want to add. Thanks. Hello. Darling. Bliss. Happy. I'm going to use that one. Might use thanks. Um, sunshine. Okay. These. And this is away. Okay. Those don't speak to me about anything other than these two. Happy and thanks. And a bunch of little typewriters, but I'm not going to put those on my mobile. Time is an important element because I think we um, often let, we lose track of the purpose of time. And uh, I think it's good to remember that you have. A limited amount of time. We all do. 
So these are just little cutouts from different things I've collected over the years. So I have a clock. I have some keys. Um, there's something about keys that I like. So we're going to put a couple, maybe three keys on my mobile. Oh, I like that one. Okay, we'll do those. We'll do those three. Marion was born at night, but it wasn't last night. That's right. <laughs> oh, Shirley, you need to do something about that. And then here I have some wooden tags. These are all the same laser cut type stuff. So we'll get some of these out. So I just pulled out some stuff, you know, just stuff I had. And maybe we'll use one of those. We'll use two of those. We'll use two big ones. Well, I don't know. Let's not use the same one. Let's do something different. How about that one? Okay. Okay, so we have some little wood um, pieces of stuff. And so let's paint these a little bit, Hi. shall we? Why not? Um, I don't know whether these the daubers on these are going to work or not, but these are distressed paints. We'll see. We're just going to use whatever works. We're not going to stress out about any of this stuff. Right? That's right. So let's use some, let's get some paint out and see what happens. Distressed paint has a, a mixing ball, so you got to shake it. Okay, if they're not going to work, the dauber tops do tend to um, stop up, <clears throat> but I've had these for a long time, so I'm not going to, they don't owe me anything. Like anything, you have to use it. Okay, so we're just going to put some paint here and there. Finger paint. And I'm just hitting um, hitting a few things here and there with some with some paint. And so we're going to call that one done. It's got some paint crumbs on it. Okay, so let's pick another color. Let me get rid of what I've got on my hand. So let's pick another color at random. This one is Bundled Sage. That's right. How can you not love finger painting? Although I have to admit, I don't do much of it. Let's see if this one wants to work. It's just easier to finger paint. Let's just do that. Let's just not worry about the daubers. Let's just finger paint. Because we can. And with the, I'm sure this has a little dirt thrown in from all those journals, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh-huh. Now, could you spend a whole bunch of time painting all this stuff? Absolutely. You could um, stencil on top of it. You could do, you could stamp on top of it. You know, we could spend a ton of time 
painting and stamping and all of that. Okay, are we going to? No, no we're not. The idea here is just to get some color on here. Now we got two sides to all this stuff so we're going to have to paint the other side too. Almost put the lid on before I put the dauber top back on. That would have been not so cool, Barb. Okay, um, let's do add a little picked raspberry. <laughs> Barb gave away a million dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's put some picked raspberry on something. How about on this it says thanks, so it stands out. And I'm not going to worry about the edges of things, you know. I'm just want some color here and there. And we might even put on some Inca gold, you know, put a little Inca gold on the edges of things or smear a little of that on here. Why not? I like keys. I wonder why I like keys. Anybody else here like keys? Yeah, it does kind of remind you of strawberry smoothie, raspberry smoothie. What's your favorite smoothie, Travis? Can't tell you how good it is to see you in the chat. Thanks for popping in, chatting with us. Art journal guy is Travis. He's from the same town where I live, although we never met in person. We have a, a special, I feel a special uh, kinship with him just because of that. Alright, so we got a little bit of that going on. Put that one away. Hi, Deborah. Strawberry banana. That does sound good. You guys like keys too? Why do you think we like keys? Tell me why you think we like keys. I don't know. Mustard seed. I always like mustard seed, and I always like uh, twisted citron. So we'll use these two colors. peach mango smoothies. I've never had a peach mango, but sounds good. Okay, let's put a little yellow, just a tiny little bit here and there. Yellow brightens everything a little bit. Okay, and then we'll... Jamie says she likes keys. A reminder that we have to unlock we have the key to unlock the question. Oh, Jamie, that's deep, girl. I have to think about that one. You're making my brain hurt here on this Drama Free Friday. <laughs> that was a good one, Jamie. That was a good one. So, you can tell what I'm doing. I'm just adding little bits of... color here and there. What's the mystery behind the door? Mm, Melissa's got her grandfather's collection. She just keeps adding to it. It's so interesting. I have a bunch of keys also. My dad had, um, I was in charge of taking care of my parents, and which I wasn't very happy about when it originally started because I'm like, why? You have other children. Why wouldn't you make them be in charge, you know? And um, the, 
well, we won't go into all of that. But anyway, he had a, a box at the bank, you know, one of those lock boxes with important papers and stuff. Holy moly. Trying to find the key. When it came time to get rid of the lock box, I could only find one key. Couldn't find the second key. If you don't have two keys, they charge you a bunch. Yeah. So I ended up, uh, I finally just said, okay, you know, pay, pay me, charge me the money. I can't find the key. I'm not going to worry about it. Well, they're a very strange looking key anyway. And so don't you know that, I mean, like years later, uh, we were going through a whole bunch of stuff from my parents, just stuff, you know, like odds and ends of stuff. <laughs> he had a bunch of keys and that was just stuck in there with all his random keys. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi, BJ. Okay, so this is Twisted Citron. So, the moral of the story is, um, if you find the key, take it back to the bank. Which I did. And they... Uh, Gave me $25 back. not that funny? And he was such a meticulous person. But that day, that day he forgot about what that key was for. And he just like, uh, put it in with his random bunch of keys. <laughs> he did. That's exactly what happened, Becky. It's exactly what happened. He forgot what it was for. He gave me the other key, and then it was like, I don't know what this is. Well, it's a key. We'll put it with the keys. Oh, good. I'm glad you like it. $135 to have it drilled open. Mm-hmm. It has sad parts, but you know, the the point of that book, the reason I wrote it, was to encourage other people. Because, here's the thing, and we're talking about, we're talking about my book, Normal Doesn't Live Here Anymore. Um, and it does have sad parts in it, so if you think that you're going to get it and it's going to be a feel-good story all the way through, it's not, because there's sad parts in it. But there are also very encouraging parts in it, and that was the point. You know, I wanted other people to know that as bad as it got, and it got bad, it got really bad. As bad as it got, in the end, you needed to know that the story had a happy ending, and I'm fine, and I'm okay. You see me sitting here, and um, yeah, I'm fine, and I'm okay. The point is, you can recover, you can get through it, you can go on, you can have... Uh, you can build the life, you can design the life that you want, and uh, you can keep going. So that was the point. Back to the, back to the tape. Okay, so let's turn these over because we got two sides. And let's put some paint on this side. Let's start out with Twisted Citron. Hi, Josie. Welcome to the finger painting of um, stuff. Just a little finger painting going on here at the moment. I showed lots and lots of journals, old journals, and we talked about journaling earlier. Some people journal, some people art journal, some people write. We talked about a lot of that earlier. So just slapping a little bit of Twisted Citron here and there. I do love this paint. I love the colors. I like the consistency. 
Are there paint? Is there paint out there that is more reasonable in price? Yep. But I really like this paint. Now, I'm not going to paint the side of a barn with it. <laughs> Let me say that. I'm not painting the side of a barn. I'm not painting a great big canvas with it. But for small things and journal pages. Hey, Linda. Aunt Becky, Aunt Beck Creations, Becky has a blog. Good. That's cool. Sometimes crying is really good, though, you know? Sometimes crying is really good. Sometimes it's just you need to cry. It's a, whether, whether it's about you or about somebody else or whatever it is, sometimes you need to cry to get um, that release. It's very good for you. It's like laugh it, laughter. It washes you out. And I've had times in my life where I'm like, oh my gosh, I couldn't cry another tear. You know, I'm all cried out. And darn if there weren't some more tears. Yeah. It's funny how your body can work like that, isn't it? This is a strong color. This is Blueprint Sketch. It's a strong color. It's alright. Don't need everything being the same value. Strong colors are good. Patricia that's right like dies through the hourglass these are the finger paintings of our lives <laughs> that's right I used to watch um, days of our lives when I was a kid my mom and I watched days of our lives my mom was real hooked on days of our lives she got me hooked on it I was hooked on it for a long time thank goodness I got over that There's nothing like a soap opera to draw you in, as dumb as they are. <laughs> there was the summer, my mom was in the hospital one summer, and it coincided with, in case, in case you guys don't know, my son, the technical department is, uh, he's an actor as well as a brilliant technical computer genius and he was on a soap opera I've forgotten which one it was now don't remember and his episode that he was on that particular episode that he was on aired when my mom was in the hospital so we I mean I was determined that we were going to see it together she was going to get to see it and all that kind of stuff And so we knew when the episode was, and boy, we were watching it, you know, and and um, she had begun to lose touch with reality, and so the episode was on, and and he wasn't on very for very long, but he had some speed, had some lines and stuff, and um, so you know, my mother was at that point in time. I had to like say, I had to get her all ready, you know. It's like. Okay, we're going to watch this because he's going to be on. He's going to be on the TV. And so we're going to watch this. And we're in the hospital. And you know all the chaos in the hospital and stuff. And I'm like, <coughs> Mom, you need to watch. Now you need to watch because he's going to be on there. And, you know, it's like, don't look away. Don't blink. Don't do anything. And the nurses and all that would be coming in. And I'm going, nope, not now. We're watching the soap opera. <laughs> you can't do anything right now. Go away. You know, and they're like, Okay, that woman in that room, that daughter, she's a little cracked, you know. And um, so we watched him, and, and by the time, you know, I got her, I had her so focused and primed, and then I'm going, and I'm telling her, there he is, there he is, there he is, and she's watching the TV, and she's going, who is that? And I'm like, that's your grandson, and she's going, it is. It doesn't look like it. <laughs> it was crazy. Anyway, back to the table. Okay. 
So um, let's give these a little bit of a, a dry and then we're going to put some seedless preserves on them because we can and because it's a beautiful color. It was funny. Hi Tallulah. I oh, know it. Come Crying is not very comfortable, but it happens. It happens. It happened to me earlier today. <laughs> it did. It happened to me earlier today. While I was talking to you guys. If you go back and watch the first part of this, this uh, show, you'll see me tear up. Although I was able to rein it in, but yeah, funny. Sometimes you can't. Well, I just wiped out all the twisted citron on that one. That's all right. That's okay. We're not going to worry about it. All we're after is putting some color. Right? Put a little color. Add a little color. I know, Becky. Isn't that the truth? Man, it happens to me too. Okay, good enough. A little tiny bit of purple on this. Because we can. I like, th I know you guys can't imagine this, but I do like things that are bright in color. These are looking very tie-dye-esque. Sort of tie-dye-ish. And we'll put a little sparkle on them here in a minute because we're going to add some uh, Inca Gold metallic. Everything needs a little sparkle, don't you think? Okay, good enough. Okay. Okay, sorry Nancy, I just saw what you you said. Well, someone asked Barb how long she journals every day, week. Maybe I'm invisible. No, I just wasn't looking at the chat. Sorry. Um how long I journal. Uh, it varies. Uh, I would say on an average, I journal probably two or three hours a week. And it may be every day. It may be in parts of days. I don't necessarily do it every single day. Yeah, the all caps really helps, but I don't always even see it then. <laughs> That's sad but true. It's hard to, it, you know, watching the chat is not my uh, forte. I wish it were. But it's not. I see about the last three or four lines of the chat as I look, as I glance up. But I have to scroll back very often. So, anyway, I'm sorry I missed it. You're welcome. Okay, so these are these are pretty dry. Um, you know, they are what they are. So let's put some Inca Gold on them, shall we? Um, what color shall we use? I think we'll use some gold. 
and some turquoise. Now, I gotta get my finger wiped off for this so I don't put a bunch of gunk in the paint. So I'm gonna try to get stuff off my... You did all caps three times? Oh, I'm sorry, I missed it. I need a secretary. I got a technical department, now I need a secretary. I don't know whether Claus Man's here today or not. He was he was gone working earlier today, so I don't know whether he's here. Usually he'll cue me in if there's something I keep missing. Yeah, it's just uh I don't know. Some people are so good at watching the chat, interacting with the chat all the time. And the worst is when I paint, you know, when I'm painting um, wood carvings. That is just impossible for me to... That's why I end up rattling on chatting so much when I'm painting the wood, wood carvings and stuff because I honestly cannot... I can't watch and paint, watch the chat and paint at the same time. Okay, you're not supposed to do this. Let me just tell you that right now. You're not supposed to be dipping your finger in your ink of gold. So you didn't see me do it. But my ink of gold is, uh, it's dry. And so I just squirt water in it and get some out. Ink of gold, in case you don't know, is a metallic rub. They do dry out and, um, they do not recommend that you stick your finger in the container because you will put bacteria from your finger into the container. So, don't do as I do, okay? There he is, I see him. Usually, Claus Man is, will keep me up, he'll cue me on things, you know, if I miss, keep missing something, so. He'll watch the chat a little bit. Oh, that's okay, Nancy. That's not a problem. I'm glad you were persistent. I'm really glad you were persistent because I really do want to answer questions. I just don't always see them. <laughs> I just don't always see it. <laughs> yeah, damp sponge works. Uh, would work fine. Damp sponge would work fine. I just don't happen to have one right here. And if I were... Uh, not broadcasting I would be doing you know not sticking my finger in here quite as much or maybe I would you never know <laughs> but the Inca Gold when it is when you use the Inca Gold I'm just going to see can you see it? that beautiful shimmer it's lovely stuff I don't care if it dries out. It doesn't bother me a bit. I just squirt in some water, keep a, a wet baby wipe in with it. Yeah, and just keep on putting it on because I love this. I don't Where I don't love glitter, I do love Inca Gold. Yeah. Okay, so um, we're going to just put this. This is a baby wipe. I'm going to just put this back in here for now. We might use it again, but I'm going to go to the other side, turn them over. I don't think I put any on the words, did I? don't think so, so we'll put some on the words with the other color. This is turquoise. All right, I need to wipe off my finger again, try and get the crud off my finger. The thing about finger painting is that um, it does get all over your hands. Duh. That was like, yeah, everybody collectively just did a big groan on that one. Go, oh, really? <laughs> we didn't know that. We didn't know that finger painting got all over your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to just roll with the punches with Barb. You know what I'm saying? You just have to roll with the punches. 
go, yeah, she's talking and broadcasting and watching chat and watching cameras and all that kind of stuff. So people, we just have to give her a break. So if she makes really bad jokes and groaners and stuff, we just have to give her a break. We gotta roll with the punches. It is warm in my studio today. You guys watch America's Got Talent. There was a, a couple years ago, there was a gal on there and she's gonna sing. And she sang a song about her studio and the lyrics were something like, Going to my studio, my studio, my studio. That was the entire lyric. She wrote it herself. <laughs> it was one of the funniest things ever. Ever. Claus Mann and I have laughed about that. Because sometimes I'll say I'm going to the studio. So he'll start singing the studio song to me. See, this one is not nearly as uh, dry, so it's easier to, much easier to get the stuff out of. It was talent, I'm telling you. It was big talent. Going to my studio, my studio, my studio. You love me as I am, Ilona? Thank you. I love you right back. Indeed I do. I usually squirt water into this um, before I cap them and it uh, is deionized water. The kind you buy from the grocery store or you get out of a dehydrator. Dehydrator, is that the right word? Dehumidifier. I knew that didn't sound right. Dehumidifier. Okay, so there are our little our little fancy things. That doesn't look too bad. We might have to use that for something. Not today. Alright. So let's see. Um I have some words here. I have some words. I also have this Chinese stamp set. I always hesitate about this because I don't want to offend anybody. <laughs> Not on purpose. Um, these are Chinese stamps and they have good words on them. But, you know, I don't know much about the art of Chinese chops. I don't know anything about Chinese chops. But I bought this set for $2. So there you go. Now you understand why I have it. So we might have to use some of these. And if I mess this up for anybody and don't do it right um, just just ignore me I'm looking for paint or ink well yeah by the stash on the shelf oh yes that's right I do like it I do like it Lick your finger before you dip in the ink of gold. Blech. No, I won't do that because I'm telling you something. I never know what's on my finger. Mm -mm, won't be doing that. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> okay, so let's use... Um, okay, this one says success. Good omen. Success. Let's see, what do we have here? Strength and peace. Okay. This one is love and harmony. This one is wisdom and longevity. Okay, we'll use those two. Okay, wisdom. I wonder what this, I haven't used this one before. Let's try this. Wisdom. Okay, if I don't do this right, folks, don't worry about it. 
Let's stamp it once. Okay, not too bad. Well, it's there, but you can't see it. You have to tip it in the light to be able to see it. See it? It's kind of nice having it just kind of be in the back, in the, you know, part of the layer. Whoops. Just part of the layers. That's kind of fun. Let's do it again. A barn would look great painted with it. Okay. <laughs> the brand of paint was Distress Paint. The Distress Paint is what's on the background, and then I used Inca Gold on uh, top of it. That's the metallic stuff. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, back to the Wisdom one. Let's try this again with black this time. Let's see if we can get a better... Oh, that's kind of cute. Actually, that's not too bad. Okay. Um, let's put longevity on this one. I have no idea if these are right way up. It has a dot here, and that's supposed to be some sort of significance, but I don't know. Ooh, that's cute. It's probably not supposed to be cute, but I like it. Okay. So, we'll stamp those off on a piece of scrap paper. Okay, so now we have this one. This one is um, strength and peace. Both words I like. Strength. That's neat. And um, let's see if we can put the other one on this side piece. See if we can get it to show up somewhere here. So this is all going to go on a mobile. Um, good enough. All going to go on a mobile. And for the sake of time, because we're starting to get short on time here, I'm going to go back to these stickers. I'm going to use the ones that are the big ones. And we're just going to stick some words on here. Um, and so I, what I may add is these are the words that are over here. I may go back at some point and stamp these on some colorful paper and cut them out and add them to my mobile. But I'm not going to do that today. Because we're, like I said, we're starting to get short on time. So let's just pick out some words. Let's go back here to the black section. And we're just going to pick out some words and add to these tags. So, so anything that jumps out at me, good deal. That's great. Go home and have a wonderful weekend. So we're just going to add words here and there. Because we can, so let's add one on this side. This one needs a white, the white background though. Whoops! Doesn't stuff stuff always land lands glue side down, doesn't it? It's like buttered toast. Always lands with the butter on the bottom. Okay, so we're going to call that one done. Let's do this one. I'm going to use the word remember because nobody gets where they are without other people. And you need to remember that. And I need to refresh myself about that. Okay, remember, um, also, let's 
good to be kind. Okay, done with that one. Okay, this one has, is bigger, so let's see if by some chance we can find one of these things that might work. This is good. Life doesn't have to be perfect to be wonderful. Okay, doesn't have to be. So I'm just going to cut this apart and put this on. Life doesn't have to be perfect. What was it that one feather I put on there? Not my monkeys, not my circus. <laughs> I love that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's here. Those of you that are here, still here, that are VIP members um, of the website, the VIP class is tomorrow. Your email should have arrived in your inbox this morning with information. So be sure you check that out. All right, let's see if we can find another one I like. And we're just going to do creativity takes courage and put it right on there. And I'm going to put it on sideways. I'm going to be a rebel. I'm a rebel like that. Just putting it on sideways, people. Okay. There we go. All right. So we've got stuff added to all this. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this, and then I will finish it, take pictures of it, write a blog post about it on howtogetcreative.com. You'll find that information. But I'm just going to show you what I'm going to start with. So I have my tags. I have my keys. I have my stuff that's a, you know that is important to me for whatever reason. I have my feathers, which have my words and affirmations on them. And I, as I said, I may go back and stamp some of these big words and cut them out and add them to my mobile later right so what i'm going to do is i have yarn i have um this is sorry silk strips And I have wire. So I have 22 gauge copper and brass wire. This came from the hardware store. And I have uh, wire tools if I need them. But most of all, I have a cutter. So let's take a feather and let's wire a feather on just because we can. So this is 22 gauge wire. So this is easy to bend with your fingers. So I'm going to just take a nice long piece of wire like so and I'm just going to whap, I started to say whap, <laughs> yes, I'm going to whap it around this here twee like so. And I'm going to do some with yarn and some with wire. And let's see. Let's, um, let me come down here. And I'm just going to take the two ends and wrap them together. This is nothing. This is not, this is not jewelry techniques. This is just for fun. So I've just wrapped those together so that way it will hang down from my twig and then I'm just going to add one of my tags. This could also be done with fiber. 
And then I'm just, but I'm not, I'm using wire for this one just because. And I'm just going to wrap the wire end like so. See? And so they're going to go all different directions. You can straighten them out. My goal, and then I will put a piece of sari silk or a bunch of yarns and sari silk up here to make a hanger. And then I'm probably going to hang this in a window so that when the, the uh, window is open, it will kind of blow the blow things around a little bit. Bugs. Did I say bugs? Okay, so I'm going to cut another piece. I'm going to make this a different size. Okay, so my goal here is to have them be different sizes. And so this is brass 22 gauge wire. Even though it's 22 gauge wire, it is um, a little stiffer in some ways than... Um, do this again. Okay, start over. Okay. So sometimes the brass wire can feel stiffer than the copper wire. So this is where I'm just going to play. Oh, come on. Seriously? I'm just going to play with this and I'm going to fill up the stick with my stuff. So let's put this key on here. So I'm going to put the key, making it a different length. See, it's going to be a different length than the tag. Okay like so. And then you can straighten out the wire. Like so. She says, as the wire has a mind of its own, that's okay. When it hangs up, it'll be all right. And then to finish off the ends of the um, twig, I'll use a combination of wire and also fiber and I'm going to wrap the ends of the twig. To give it some interest and color and just to make it look different, you know, give it some interest. Okay, so let's take a feather. And with the feather, let's use a piece of yarn, just so you can see with a piece of yarn. This is 45% silk and 35 35% wool and 20% nylon. This is a, this is lovely. Lovely stuff. Okay, somewhere there is a yarn end. Should have found this before I came on camera, but no, I, that would have been far too easy. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, these feathers have a little bit of a, they have a little bit of a sticky outy part. How do you like that for technical? So I'm going to see if this will work, that I can tie this yarn and get it to hold. If it doesn't hold, you know what I can do? I have my trusty Aline's glue. Add a little dab of glue. A little dab will do ya. Okay. And so then we decide how long we want this feather to be. This came from, the inspiration for this came from an article in Somerset, I think it was Somerset Life, the 
current issue and it was uh, from an artist named Lynn and her last name I don't know how to pronounce it Moncrief or something of that sort apologies to Lynn because I don't know how to say your name she contributes often to uh, the Somerset publications I've noticed okay so can you see kind of how this is gonna go see kind of how it's gonna go so I'm just going to keep filling up and filling up and filling up the um, twig with all different kinds of things and words and whatever else. And I might find things hanging around my house that I want to add on here. But this is all going to be stuff when I fill it up that's going to be stuff that makes me feel good. So I'm going to have things that are shorter and longer. But everything that makes me feel good and that I want to express good energy yeah yes yeah, Joyce says you could poke a hole in the feather not the yarn and push it through yeah absolutely so that could be done to these feathers too absolutely okay so they're in you, you see the process so I'm gonna dangle these little words and just whatever else and I may have to use I may have to get more stuff you know to hang on this um, but I have all kinds of feathers I have all kinds of little stuff and it is it is an expression of where I am at this point in time and what's important to me so you kind of get the idea right we'll just kind of put these out here and there so you kind of get the idea of how it's gonna go right And then at the top, it'll have a hanger made with fiber and sorry silk ribbon and so forth. So that's the idea of how it's going to go. So we'll see what it looks like next week. Because I'll do, I'll finish it up and I'll show it to you next week. Sound good? All right. Any questions? Attach one feather so we can see. I did. I did. There's a feather. Right there. See? There's a stick. There's a feather. And then when you hold it up, it just, see it how it blows in the, from my ceiling fan, making it blow? See, I love stuff like this. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I like things like that. I like things that make me feel good. There's enough ugliness in the world. I think it just started raining here. It's funny. Um, there's enough ugliness that I refuse to entertain. So, we make things look pretty. Alright, let me get the sponsors because it's uh, sponsor time. Don't you know? Yep, so let's just move all this stuff out of the way. We've got to give the sponsors a little bit of room. Let me see if I did everything on my list. I intended to do today. I did. Chance has just discovered it's time to get out. He's talking to me. Yes. Yeah, it's your time. It's your time to shine. Mm -hmm. It is your time to shine. Whoops. You just knocked everything over, buddy. It was probably my fault anyway. Yes. Okay, it is sponsor time. I don't know whether uh, the other one will come out and get up here or not. But anyway, thank you so much for being here with us. And thanks for indulging me with my opinion about uh, journaling and encouraging you to journal. And encouraging you to look at the old stuff and that's around you and so forth so you're welcome thanks everybody for being here i am so great that are so grateful that you were here each and every one of you charlie's on the floor coughing as per usual because that's what he does <laughs> he's got the he's got the cough at the moment anyway it's good to see you all thank you so much for being here i hope you have a wonderful weekend and uh you know, in case you're new and don't know, we do have 
a website called howtogetcreative.com and on that website it is a membership website you can come and um, check it out we have all kinds of classes we'd love to have you check us out and come spend some time with us uh, yeah so the VIP class is tomorrow check your email I will see you next week for most of you I will see you then so remember to get creative today because you know it's easy and I'll see you next time have a great weekend everybody bye